Hi everyone, I'm Tracy, and I'm a bioinformatics group lead at the Sydney Informatics Hub from the University of Sydney. And today I'm going to talk about how we've been working with the Australian Biocommons and their partners to use NCRIS facilities to tackle a big data problem happening in the life sciences field. And this is around building scalable bioinformatics workflows to, to give researchers the capability to process and analyse these large omics data sets. Before I start, I thought I'd give you an introduction to who the Australian Biocommons are. They are a part of Bioplatforms Australia, and they have a common mission with their partners, which is to enhance digital life sciences research nationally. The group is quite large and includes people from a number of organisations with various backgrounds. This breadth of expertise puts us in a really good position to achieve this mission from multiple directions, and I'm sure you hear about some of these at other talks in this conference. For this session, the project that I'll talk about is the Bring Your Own Data Command Line Interface Project. And the idea here is to create highly accessible, available and scalable analysis and data sharing capabilities on command line interface platforms. And as I'll discuss throughout this talk, the types of command line interface platforms that I'll focus on are NCRIS High Performance Compute or HPC facilities, that are nationally available, including HPCs at NCI, PAUSI, and UQ. I guess a big reason that this project arose stemmed from the relatively recent development of digital sensing technologies that can sequence and measure various molecules in an organism. In the past, these sorts of technologies were super expensive, hard to access, and life science researchers who were used to performing wet lab experiments suddenly found themselves having to learn how to analyze this digital data. Since then, the technologies have developed so much and are so much cheaper. And because of this, the technologies are being more widely applied and commonplace. On the slide, I have some examples of Bioplatforms Australia projects of how local researchers are applying these technologies. And you can see that they span from human health research towards Indigenous people, our native animals, animal conservation, understanding plants and their pathogens. Uh, but of course, there are so many more applications that I haven't represented here. Because of this improvement in accessibility to these technologies, the amount of data being produced by these platforms is becoming massive. As this paper coins it, the data is becoming genomical and it's comparable to big other big data producers, including astronomy, YouTube, and Twitter. This growth is true across multiple omics technologies, and we can see this in this plot of data accumulation that is housed at the European Bioinformatics Institute over time. Each of the databases that they house are in the petabyte scale, reaching the 100 petabyte scale. And not, not only is the scale growing generally across the domain, but the number of independent research groups performing their own big data analysis is also growing. So it has become a real need to be able to scale these bioinformatics workflows to process these data sets. To really home in on where we could make the most impact, we had to figure out current practices and needs in the community. And the types of questions that we wanted to get answers for were what facilities uh, where did researchers have access to and we're currently using? How are the researchers uh, using national HPC facilities um, for those that did have access? And I guess what really makes them different to the other researchers who didn't use these facilities? For the researchers that don't but potentially want to, what were their barriers to access? which technologies, workflows and tools were being uh, applied most commonly and what scale were the groups applying each of these workflows to. And I guess the last couple of points also really gave us a good idea of the specific workflows that were difficult to run at other facilities or platforms available to researchers, such as Galaxy Australia. And that really required national HPC facilities or specialist hardware or the amount of hardware to enable scalable analysis and reduce time to science. We found a lot of our answers by direct researcher engagement, and we also had a close look into projects successfully awarded time on national HPC facilities since 2018 through national and merit, uh, partner merit schemes. 
These proved to be really valuable, covering at least 16 institutions across Australia, performing the most data intensive and meritorious research projects. Through our compute facility partners, we were also able to do things like check for the types of tools being installed and executed. From this, we were able to gather the general wants of the community, which were for best practice pipelines to be accessible from anywhere, had good documentation, support and training, and were easy to access. We found that many best practice command line bioinformatics uh, workflows were not very accessible to researchers because they were not designed for the facilities that Australian researchers had access to, which was predominantly HPC. The tools, if run out of the box, didn't utilize HPC hardware efficiently. And because bioinformatics workflows are so complex, consisting of many different tools, it actually takes quite a lot of time and expertise to benchmark and optimize the tools as required by national and partner merit scheme allocations to even get on the system. We also found that many best practice tools don't natively scale well. We found the most common workflows and prioritized these. And for the bioinformaticians out there, there were things like genome and transcriptome assembly, mapping and variant calling. And we did the same for tools and identified commonly used tools such as Trinity, BWA, GATK, BLAST, and SAM tools. Taking a closer look at these priority tools and workflows, we can quickly appreciate why the community had these struggles. And that is because many of the tools don't operate the way that HPC is traditionally used. Traditionally, HPC is used for tasks with relatively small input data, where data is kept in memory during execution, and there are many computations being performed per data element. The limit with these jobs tend to be more compute uh, or related to network capacity which really isn't an issue with national HPC facilities, which were actually designed to cater for these types of compute. Bioinformatics uh, can also fall um, under the other three categories, which are data intensive, which largely refers to jobs that need to handle large amounts of input data and also create large amounts of outputs. So mapping and variant calling workflows are examples of this. And to give you a rough idea of size, I've been working with a cancer research group that analyzed 380 samples. With these, they consume 250 terabytes worth of disk space. This group plans to scale this study up to 2,000 samples next year. And based off the first study cohort, uh, they would need um, to consume 820 terabytes of disk. The last two relate to IO or input or output and memory intensive jobs. IO intensive uh, largely refers to jobs that create millions to billions of temporary little files, which if not handled well, can impact the entire file system. Many Nova assembly type workflows uh, fit into both of these categories. To make things more complex, as I mentioned, bioinformatics tends to require the implementation of a workflow which includes multiple tools, and these tools can fall into one or more of these categories. For a bit of fun, I thought I'd show you how complex a workflow can be. On the slide is a diagram of a workflow created by a popular workflow language called Nextflow. And the diagram shows how each of your processes shown in the bubbles are connected uh, by data channels sh uh, shown in the lines, shown by the lines. I realize this diagram isn't very clear on the slide, and this is actually my intention for showing you this, as it really does show how complex these workflows can get. To show you that this is not uncommon, here's another one of a commonly used RNA sequencing pipeline. So I guess what we just discussed was not really to suggest that bioinformatics workflows were not suitable or meant for HPC, although that might be true to some extent. But I suppose the way that compute facilities expect people to use HPC is not how a bioinformatician would use them. And so there is a mismatch between the workflows and the paradigms around how people use and access national HPC. So with national 
uh, HPCs. They expect high resource efficiency, tools that can use multiple nodes, short jobs, but jobs with large uh, compute requests and jobs that have good IO management. However, with uh, many bioinformatics tools, efficiency and resources can vary and can often be hard to predict or control in advance. For example, when you're studying a new species. Most bioinformatics tools also don't, um, they're not able to use multiple nodes natively, have long wall times and can be IO intensive. The last point that I also wanted to raise is that solutions to portable and reusable pipelines, um, particularly those using Docker or Singularity containers, are not really supported by HPC systems. And this is also something we have to consider. So knowing the community needs, uh, compute facility use, usage expectations, and the currently available tools and workflows, the aims of the project became really clear, which were to make priority command line interface workflows efficient and scalable on national HPC facilities, and to improve national HPC, uh, to pr improve the accessibility to national HPC facilities. Um, not only by creating these compatible workflows, but providing resources to support accessing them. Um, and by working with the Australian Biocommons and their partners, we not only had the right expertise to do this, but we could do this in a really coordinated and efficient manner. We had five approaches um, and outcomes to address these aims, which were to first optimize priority workflows for the compute facilities, come up with an ongoing support model, create and share resources to support merit scheme applications, create user guides and deliver training that supports not only the use of these workflows, but to help users access the right types of compute for them. On the bottom panel, I also wanted to highlight that there are also many complementary ongoing projects within the Biocommons that support their access to these resources that we're building and want to share. This project kicked off late last year, and I'm really pleased to say that we have more than 10 workflows re-engineered for scalability and efficiency on NCI, PAUSI, and UQ's HPCs. And this covers a wide range of priority workflows that we identified as well as technologies. And this was done uh, in partnership with HPC specialists at the national facilities. To ensure these workflows are find findable and accessible, the workflows are publicly reg registered on Workflow Hub. This is a public registry of workflows where people can search and download these workflows and also where we can mint DOIs for workflows to track their usefulness. Within the Biocommons team, we have 14 workflows registered and with only three of these registered a couple of months ago, I'm really happy to say that we've had over 3000 views and 50 downloads already. To support users with using and accessing national HPC, we prepared sample merit uh, allocation scheme, uh, a sample national merit scheme application that has been given the green tick by the allocation committee, and this is publicly available. To demonstrate workflow interoperability, we've implemented the workflow on various species and we share these benchmarking metrics on our user guides. Ongoing support and maintenance continue to be a challenge, but one of the ways we're tackling this is to build frameworks and resources to encourage community or partner-led development, support and maintenance. For instance, by giving documentation guidelines or recommended platforms to register their workflows with. And finally, something I'd like to mention is some of the training that we've de delivered to support access, which include the National Merit Scheme application, um, and we've also put together a great resource for users to show them how and where to get access to other facilities, particularly for those who don't actually need um, national HPC. Thank you so much for your time and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the conference.